there's a lot of anger out there. Some of it might be yours. That's okay. I'm not going to tell you to calm down. I don't think you should. I won't tell you things will get better either. I don't think they will. You should be angry. However, many angry people don't understand why they're angry. They lash out at people around them or attack people they don't know anything about because they don't understand the roots of their problems. In this video, I'm going to diagnose this popular anger and help you channel it towards goals that might actually benefit you. I can't tell you exactly what's wrong with you, but I might be able to guess. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. Have you ever seen the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas? A man gets progressively angrier over the course of a day as things seem to get worse and worse. The movie gives him targets for his rage, each one seeming to give him more reasons to lash out like he does. And yet there's a sense that things aren't quite so bad, that Douglas's character is overreacting, that he doesn't have to be so violent, and as such, his actions must have some other causes behind them. Which we find out as the movie progresses. His expression of anger just seems irrational. I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry, too. Get gun! Oh, let's get organized! Oh, 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 oh. Calm down! Just calm down, everybody! Why would you pull a gun out in a fast food restaurant just because they're not serving breakfast anymore? Well, maybe if you thought you deserved it or had some right to it. Maybe if you thought you needed it or it was a part of who you are and someone was trying to take it away. Or maybe his anger really is misplaced and it should be directed at someone or something other than low-paid retail workers. Maybe he should have looked for underlying causes before flying off the handle. Anger directed at the wrong targets can lead to all kinds of trouble, but anger based on understanding and using strategy can change the world. The first thing to understand about anger is it comes from fear. It's often a way of covering up our fear so we don't have to admit it to ourselves and we can just blame someone else. So what are you afraid of? And I don't mean spiders or snakes or whatever, not phobias. What are the reasonable fears that underlie your anger toward people and movements and ideas? What do you fear to lose? Until you answer that question truthfully for yourself, you'll never understand your anger and someone will come along, provide you with easy scapegoats, and you'll be ripe for believing them. The first way that they get you to scapegoat is by telling you you're the problem. And hey, if we're talking about why your last relationship fell apart, that might be partly on you. I don't know, I wasn't there. And you might think because I brought up falling down, I would say introspection or therapy is where you'll discover the root of your problems. I certainly think we should start with ourselves, sure, but not all of our problems are caused by the wrong habits or attitudes. Some people are legitimately worried they won't be able to provide for themselves and their families. In this culture, especially in North America, that's all put on you. The entire burden for your well-being, and for many people, the well-being of your whole family, is on your shoulders. We're brought up to blame ourselves first, which, again, could be valid if it's like an interpersonal problem, but we generalize it to mean all our problems are probably our own faults. Even if no one will hire you or give you a loan. Even if you have no home or retirement savings or rainy day fund, it's all your fault. I don't need to ask why and learn about your history. Blame is always individualized in this culture. You're not even supposed to ask for help. Sounds dystopian. Millions of people living next to each other yet all alone in the world. 
In such a context, it makes sense to blame yourself. You didn't get a job, you didn't save money, you didn't plan, etc. It makes it easy to assign blame and keeps the world nice and simple. But who's helping you? You're trying to make it through all your obligations when the world is trying to take everything away from you. As a result of all this pressure, if anything or anyone seems to stand in the way of us providing for our families or whatever, that person becomes the enemy. If there's a protest on the road that stops you getting to work on time, they're the enemy. It's not the system that forces you to earn money. It's not the people who will punish and lecture you and take your money for being late. No, those things are already considered normal. So we don't hate them just for doing what's normal. We hate other people for making us fail in our duties to this system. Duties we never agreed to. We hate other oppressed people because it's easier than hating impersonal forces like someone else's rules or economic systems. This purely individual way of thinking makes it easy for us to believe we can be free when other people aren't. Sorry, but if they can take one person's freedom or life away for nothing, they can take yours away too. We see this situation, this isolation, this obligation to carry a heavy burden on our own as normal, but historically it isn't. I'm not going into history here, but I explain it in the videos I link to in the description. But you should have a whole community behind you, and you should have access to the things you need without having to work your ass off first, without having to set up a GoFundMe or an OnlyFans, without constant worry that you'll starve to death in the street. It shouldn't all come down to you. That community support, that access to necessities, that security has been taken away from you. That's a reason to get mad. But who took it away? If I were to listen to the right-wing press, I would get easy answers to that question. One easy answer is women. Women joined the workforce and now they compete with men for the same jobs. If only women hadn't become workers, it would be easier for me to get a job. I'm pretty sure given the way the economy works, that's not actually true, but for some people, that's all they need to hear. Working women are pushing your wages down, so working women are a threat to you. I guess that's why women on social media pushing for equality get so many death threats. Not all men are ready to give up their dominance. The same logic is employed to talk about immigrants. They come here, compete for jobs, drive down wages, etc. But before we hate women and immigrants, let's stop and think. First, immigrants or other low-level workers aren't the ones signing your paychecks. They don't set hiring and firing policies. They don't decide you'll be paid the bare minimum the company can get away with and given a long speech if you dare ask for more. How much do the people who own these businesses have? Do you ever ask that? Have you seen the houses they live in and the cars they drive around in? Do they, do they deserve all that money? Because if so, you, by extension, deserve the low salary and shitty living conditions they have, that you have. But why? Why would any of this be right? Because you were told from a young age the system is fair and rewards people according to their contribution? That's just propaganda. You were born into this system. You didn't agree to some lottery whereby if you won you would get a billion dollars and if you lost you would get a lifetime of hard work. That was imposed on you. The people who own the businesses are the ones who keep the system going because they benefit from it. They're the ones telling you women and immigrants are driving down your wages, even though they're the ones who set the wages. They're the ones who told you if your wage was any higher, they wouldn't be able to hire you. Or if the job gets offshore, that means some brown guy is stealing your job from you. Hmm. They could pay you more. In fact, you could own and run the company with the rest of the employees, like a cooperative. But instead, most people take their paychecks and go look for a scapegoat. 
But maybe you're a little too smart to get sucked into those arguments. Maybe you know the problem is with the ruling class. And in your search for answers, you learn a lot of the richest people are Jews. <gasps> now I get it. It's the Jews. No, it isn't. That's just another scapegoat. One with a history of at least a thousand years behind it. And when you hear people talking about, like, lizard people or whatever other weird group supposedly controls everything, you know they're really talking about Jews. It's just as lazy to scapegoat Jews as it is to scapegoat women, immigrants, or yourself. They're such easy targets. It's where people end up if they realize there's a ruling class to blame, but still don't know how it works. They read some shit about Jews making up most of the world's bankers, or the Rothschild conspiracy, or some other nonsense, and think they've found answers. Most Jews are workers and peasants like the rest of us. Rulers don't care about things like religion and identity, except to the extent they can use them to keep us fighting amongst ourselves. There is a ruling class, and it uses extremely powerful propaganda. That's why it takes more than reading the first thing you find on the internet to understand it. Some of the same people realize there are problems with the system, but they aren't willing to spend the time learning about it as a whole. They realize the government doesn't work for us, but they still don't really get how power works, so they're reaching the wrong conclusions. Among these are the anti-vaxxers and the anti-maskers. Instead of thinking critically about interests and institutions and how propaganda works, they start from the assumption that everything the government and news media say is bullshit. They don't get how vaccines work because they don't ask scientists. <laughs> Just, again, the first thing they read on the internet. Now they're mad because they're supposed to wear masks, and wearing a mask is a slight inconvenience. Wearing a mask to protect yourself and others from getting sick just makes sense. Don't wear it because the government told you to. Wear it out of respect for the people around you and for the healthcare workers. There seem to be millions of people in North America who think wearing a mask is an example of government tyranny or the beginning of tyranny. I, I think these people have, must have been asleep most of their lives. Government embodies tyranny. All government forces you to do things or to take away your freedom to do other things. Every law they create criminalizes something, and with millions of laws over a few hundred years, they've limited and disciplined you into working for the current system. Every new tax or debt to your money is it takes your money and gives it to someone with a lobby group. A job is tyranny. You have to do everything a person or organization tells you to, whatever hours they say, under constant surveillance for however little money they say. Think about what freedom really means and think about how much of it you've already lost. That's a reason to get angry. These anti-maskers and virus deniers and others protesting the lockdown ignore all those other things, all the millions of attacks on our freedom that they've accepted obediently, and focus on the one thing governments don't even benefit from. Governments don't want you to cover your face during normal times. Don't you know about surveillance? Don't you know how many cameras are around? They want to be able to identify you so they can punish you if you do anything against their interests. What freedom does a mask take away exactly? The freedom to show people your mouth? That's the one you care about? Same with the lockdowns. Whether or not you think lockdowns work, governments don't want them. They want you to go out and work and consume and pay taxes. Same reason they give you vaccines, so you don't get sick and spread deadly viruses around. We have an interest in not getting sick, which lines up with the government's interest of having a healthy workforce. You should be angry at, like, most, almost everything that the government does, but the one time in a thousand our interests are the same is the time you choose to rebel? <laughs> See, I can get angry. 
It's no coincidence such a big part of the population of the U.S. is in denial about COVID, and the spread of the virus there is out of control. Hospitals are overflowing, but you want to go to the mall. Okay, I guess that's what freedom means to you. But isn't it kind of like pulling a gun out in a McDonald's because they won't serve you breakfast? It's frustrating to see this energy directed, apparently, at spreading a virus around instead of solving actual problems, instead of actually fighting for freedom and the life that you claim to be pro. Maybe you should think about what freedom really is. Have you ever spoken out this militantly against all the wars? The corporate bailouts? Racism? Surveillance? The destruction of the environment? The endless building of prisons? The concentration camps on the border? The unlimited power of the police and corporations? Missing and murdered indigenous women and girls? Do you even care? If not, are you sure you care about freedom? Please learn how this system works so you stop falling for media grifters. You might also want to learn how people come to believe in conspiracy theories. Not because there are no conspiracies, but because you're focused on the wrong one. The state, the ruling class, the capitalist system, that is the conspiracy. The smaller conspiracies are usually spread with some ulterior motives behind them. If you want the truth, you need to dig deeper than what some guy says online. The biggest media grifter today is probably Donald Trump. Trump is great at playing on people's fears and turning them into action. His election campaign focused on fear of China, Mexicans, Muslims, and crime. China, because supposedly that's where all the jobs are going. Again, bear in mind who is shipping jobs overseas, who it is who has so little loyalty to you they're okay with bankrupting you to raise the value of their stock a little. Mexico, because that's where illegal immigrants supposedly come from, and because they're stealing your jobs and pushing your wages down. Well, really, they're just working people who want a better life for themselves and their families like you. You could unite with them to make a movement so you don't have to rely on a corporation allowing you to collect a salary, but not if you still blame them for your problem. Muslims, because since 9-11 they've been the bad guys, the evil people we don't know anything about, but we're sure they're bad. And crime, because even though crime is just anything the government decides you're not supposed to do, the word crime conjures up murder and robbery and makes you flock to the police. So those are great scapegoats for right-wing populists like Trump. And even now that he's abandoned those arguments, he's using his remaining time in office to fleece his unsuspecting fans. There's no chance at all he won the election, and no chance the military will let him stay on as president. But by playing the victim, he's still getting angry people to send him money. They're just still angry, but they're angry at the wrong thing. They think you can drain the swamp by putting new people in it. They think you can improve or shrink the state without shrinking the military and law enforcement budgets. They don't have a very deep understanding of how the system works, so they're ripe for the plucking. This year, Trump has been playing up the foreign nature of COVID-19, calling it the Chinese virus. Is China to blame? Well, the government of China covered up the outbreak initially, letting the virus spread a bit before warning about it, so they blame, bear some of the blame, yeah. But you might also want to ask some questions about why the U.S. government did so little about it, too. Healthcare in the U.S. is so expensive that unless you have a job that covers it, you probably won't get it. Who made healthcare so inaccessible? Why did the government do so little to help people? Haven't we been told all our lives that governments are supposed to protect people? Well, maybe, maybe this year that claim can finally be exposed as mindless propaganda. The people and institutions who have the money to help have done next to nothing. They've taken all the money and they're keeping it for themselves. 
So if you're afraid of getting sick and spreading it to your parents and afraid to take time off work because you'll miss rent, there are people to blame. There are people who've already taken everything from you but who demand you work more, maybe exposing yourself to a deadly virus in the process. So you should be angry. You just need to analyze your situation to know who should be the target of your anger and what to do about it. This year, the U.S. has seen major protests against racism and fascism. Those are angry people who know who their enemies are and who know how to solve their problems by changing the system. But there are millions of Americans who are angry at the protesters. In other words, millions of Americans don't care enough about racism and fascism to get angry about them. They're mad because the protests are making things inconvenient. I want to get to work, but there's someone blocking the road. So it might come back to fear of losing my job. Or, they looted a Target, so who says my mom and pop store won't be next? Or, they burned down a police station, so who says they're not coming to burn down the suburbs next? Most of these fears are stoked by right-wing media full of unrealistic what-ifs. But they're enough to anger millions of people into saying silly nonsense like, protesters are terrorists. These people are saying they would rather see the full force of the police used against those people than be inconvenienced. They care more about the profits of a big box store than they do about poverty. They're so afraid black people might not have to be their servants anymore, they violently oppose anti-racist action. This is how the ruling class keeps us fighting with each other, rather than directing our anger at them. When people try to fight the system, they get told to shut up. People who love the system or country or culture because they just never question it are some of the angriest people. Anything the newspapers tell them is a threat makes them angry. People like that are largely manipulated by the ruling class and don't really value the things they claim to. They think you can have complete conformity to a culture or political system and also have freedom. No. You can have conformity, or you can have freedom. Most people opt for the former while claiming to believe in the latter. After all, it couldn't be the fault of the system, because we've been told the system is just fine as it is. When someone wants to fight or change or eliminate the system, they're attacking people's beliefs. It's not a perfect system slash country gets met with something like, you just want something for nothing, or, or some other excuse not to think. For some of us, our beliefs are all we have. So I'm sorry to take them away from you like this, but you don't have your own country or government. Those things are owned by other people. But if you believe they're your country, because you still believe what you were told in school, then an attack on one part of the country is an attack on you. And because nationalism is an excellent source of anger, anyone who wants to motivate you to act can play the country card. Again, anger is the result of fear. People are taught to believe in countries and to fear changes to them. We're taught our culture is inherently superior, or at least that it needs defending. And then the media tell us who is trying to change it. You get told you value something, then you get told someone's trying to take it away. This is an attack on our country! So all self-identified patriots have to get angry at the people conducting the offensive. What if they're trying to rectify the historical injustices your convenient understanding of history would prefer to sweep under the rug? You ever think of that? You're going to hate on them for that? You're going to dismiss their arguments and encourage violence against them because this country you believe in might change? To me, it makes about as much sense as getting angry because someone insulted the type of car you drive. But then, I expect people get angry at that too. But if you don't like people criticizing how your beloved political system works, I suggest trying to solve the problems it creates. Some people don't get angry, though. 
They get anxious or depressed or both, or they take drugs, or they eat too much, or whatever they do to cope. Our culture tells us to look for individual reasons and causes for mental illness. It's your brain chemistry, they say. Change that and you'll be okay. But in so many cases, the problem is the same as what makes us angry. You're afraid of the future, you're exhausted or bored in the present, so life looks like shit. Sometimes they take it out on people around them, but mostly they take it out on themselves. And the only prescription anyone can think of to help is exercise, better diet, more sleep, meditation. And hey, those are great, but they're not going to solve your problems. The causes of your insecurity will still be there when you wake up. Because you still live under capitalism. You still have very little chance of working your way to the prosperity you see on TV, least of all by yourself. We're expected to be strong, to shoulder all of life's burdens without reacting. But I'd rather have a world where we can lean on each other when we need. To be the vulnerable and fragile people we are, while still being safe. There's only so much I can tell you about the causes of your problems. You will need to think about it yourself, maybe in conjunction with the people around you. I started this channel to help people understand how these social systems work and show people there are alternatives to the present order. So if this is your first time here, check out other videos. Whatever you do, if you want to learn, watching the news isn't going to help much. The news doesn't teach you history and it doesn't help you envision the future. It doesn't teach you about oppressive systems, how we're oppressed and robbed and bamboozled, because the news is part of those systems. We're talking about a system of theft that enables people to get rich by taking from everyone else. A system of propaganda that tricks you into believing everyone can get rich if you just work hard. A system of oppression that throws you into the street if you can't make rent, and throws you in jail if you dare try to get by without a job. That's what you should be angry at, your oppression. I'll tell you another reason to be angry. Things are going to get worse before they get better. We've been joking about how bad 2020 is, right? 2021 will be worse. You know why I think that? The problems of 2020 are just problems that could no longer be ignored and have finally come to a head like racism, prison, and police, things that are going to cause more trouble over the coming years as we build movements to stop them. Just remember, immigrants, women, Muslims, trans people, atheists, etc. had nothing to do with it. And it probably wasn't you either. It was capitalists, bosses, owners, rich people, they used money and laws to force us to work for them, the police and prisons to see they're implemented, the corporation to accumulate wealth, PR people like the news to dress it all up in positive language, and elections so they can call it all democracy. We should hate the system. It's called capitalism. It's important to name it. It's probably the source of most of your anger. Most people don't realize it. Even if you've never scapegoated yourself or minorities of any kind, you still might not get it. We say things like, I hate Mondays, I hate my boss, I hate my job, but it's capitalism. You hate Mondays because that's the first day of the work week. You hate your boss because capitalism requires us to take orders all day without question. You hate your job because you don't get to do what you want, because you're not paid the full value of your labor, you're following other people's orders and making someone else rich. Capitalism is about concentrating wealth and power. And the thing about wealth and power is they are zero sum. If someone has wealth and power, it's because they've taken it away from others. Capitalism makes taking from others legal and easy. But again, historically, this is very unusual and can be fixed. We've only survived this long as a species thanks to mutual aid, supporting each other. Rather than letting bosses take our livelihoods away, letting landlords take our homes away, letting police take our freedom away, etc. If we stood together today, no one would have to lose their homes or go hungry. 
So why do we put up with this system? Most of us don't know it's the problem. We're given so many excuses, so many scapegoats, so many other places to look than in the eye of the beast, most of us can't even see it. It's just another social institution we live under without question. I suggest you learn more about capitalism and how its propaganda works, or you'll continue to be distracted by people you shouldn't trust and believe you have enemies who should be your allies. You'll be divided against other workers and other people in your community in favor of bad ideas that do nothing for you. You don't have to do it all by yourself. You don't have to do any of it by yourself. There are millions of us who can help. We can build communities and build movements to solve our problems, rather than hoping a politician or a billionaire will. We can build a society where we take care of each other so we don't have to be so angry. Isn't that a worthy goal? Save your anger for the people who oppress and divide us, and for the system that empowers them. We don't have to be the tools of capitalism anymore. We can be its grave diggers. Organize and fight back, and maybe we'll have a future to look forward to.